Welcome to an Invented Tips and Tricks Tutorial, Extravaganza Bonanza Special Edition, but not really. Bringing out the big guns today, we're looking at how to create an adaptive curved spring. Someone asked me about it and I thought, challenge accepted. Now if you've tried to do a coil or a, or a spring and invented it before, you've probably thought, it's easy. It's, yeah, it's easy. But if you've ever sat down and tried to make a curved spring, you know, I'm talking about a spring that's not in a straight line. You know, it, it, it starts here, it bends and ends there, and it moves like a spring. If you ever tried to do that, you probably, after five minutes, ended up looking like a horse that's been asked to book a holiday. It's not easy. So, that's what I'm here for. We're going to do this. We're using the sample files, and if... Ugh, right, I'll show you where it is. Right, so it's the, it's the skizzers. So it's sample files, models, assemblies, skizzers. Download the invented 2016 sample files from the Autodesk website. If anyone from Autodesk's watching this, what in the God, look at hell are these, it's, what is this? What is this? It's like, if we look at extrusion two, from there to there is less than an inch. That's, I mean, wh what are these? What What is this gonna cut? Are these for dwarves, little goblins, little gnome people? Uh, whatever, all it means is that the units that we're gonna be working with in this tutorial are gonna be ridiculously exaggerated and small. But that's fine, that's fine, as long as it looks okay. And that is the purpose of this. It, from an engineering perspective, it's not going to work. It's not going to be, you know, correct to a manufacturing perspective. There's going to be lots of engineers watching this going, That is not going to work. You can't build that. It won't, it just won't spring like a spring, boy. I know. I know. It just won't work. I'm putting a spring on a flat face. And it's just, it's as long as it looks okay, that's what I'm bothered about. So... If you want to follow me, by all means, do it. And BTW, this is not an easy one-click solution. This is a lot of projecting this, work plane there, sketch here, do this, dimension there, blah, blah, blah. But it's fine. It's fine. It is what it is. It's, it is, it's a bit of an advanced tutorial, just for your information. So let's get going. So we're going to open up the sample files, skizzers, and then we're going to delete this uh, fake imposter of a spring that has in the middle of it. And we're going to create a, a curved adaptive spring starting around about here. So the, the start of the coil is going to be about here, and then it's going to spring up in an arc fashion to about here. And it's going to be adaptive, which means when you know someone moves the handles and grips them, then the spring is going to compress. That's the whole point. It's adaptive with the handles. It's not easy. It's not easy. Well, it is. If once I've shown you how to do it, it is, it is quite easy. But it's uh, there's a bit of a, a trick, a bit of a knack to it. So we're going to start by creating a new part file, and that part file is going to be called um, I don't know that spring. I could have just called it spring, but no, I thought I'd be an idiot and call it that spring. And what you would normally do in the real world is you'd save that file with the rest of the parts in the same location, but it's this is just for aesthetics and cosmetics and stuff. It's just a pretend tutorial, so I don't really care. Click OK, and then just click anywhere. And that creates a new part file. Now, the new part file is empty. It's got no geometry in it whatsoever, obviously. It's a new part. And in order to make this spring adaptive to the parts in the assembly, we need to somehow hook that spring onto those parts. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that's fine. I'll just sketch here, project lines here, and I'll do... No, 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 you're not going to do any of that. We're going to go next level. We're going to select the modify drop down here, and then we're going to select copy object. And this is going to, if I try and explain this logically, copy object will copy the body of these two parts and bring them into this part as associative composites and then we click OK so we've now got an orange composite representation of the two bodies in the skizzers assembly but they're inside this part here which means that when these two parts move the the composites move as well so if I constrain the spring to the two bodies then the spring will move as per the constraints etc and so forth it all makes sense as I go through it but that's what we do copy object associative composites bring those in composites just like a group of surfaces Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to create the center line of the spring itself. Now, at the moment, there's no center line for me to sketch on. So we need to create a work plane. And that work plane, we're going to use the mid plane technique. So we're going to select the work plane, click this face here. So that's one side of the handle and then this one here. And that will root a work plane in the middle, exactly in the middle between the two faces that you just clicked. So that's now a parametric scent line between those two faces that I done just clicked. And then that'll allow me to sketch on here. 
Right, we now need to define the start and the end point of the scent line now that we've got the sketch in place. So in order to do that, we need to do a bit of jiggery pokery. So we're gonna use project geometry and we can't project the face itself. Obviously the spring, the, the start of the, the spring is gonna be on that face there, but we cannot really project that face onto this sketch. It's sort of in the wrong orientation. So instead we're gonna project that edge there and then that edge there, which is that one there. And that gives us two lines to work with. Now, I don't want, you might be thinking, well, it just started there. That's where it's gonna start. That is the center line, isn't it? Isn't that the center line? No, no, it's not. It'll be apparent at the end of the video why it's not. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna offset these two lines up and we're gonna start the scent line and end the scent line slightly raised from the grip handles. And the reason for that will be apparent in a bit. So the next thing we're gonna do is create a parameter and we're gonna call this spring dia. And the, this is the diameter of the actual spring. If you think about the metal on a spring, this is the diameter of that circular profile. And it's ridiculously small, it's gonna be 0 0.4 millimeters. Press return. So we're gonna work on a principle on the basis that the spring diameter is gonna be 0 0.4 millimeters. So the next step is to offset this line here, up there, and then offset this line here, there. Create a dimension from here to here, and then this dimension of the offset is going to be the spring diameter divided by two. And the same goes here. We're gonna dimension from there to there, and then this dimension is gonna be whatever. Actually, get rid of that. It's gonna be whatever this one is here. Okay, the reason for that, I could try and explain why I'm doing this. It'll be apparent in the end that my explanation will just sound like absolute gibberish and nonsense. So it's probably best if I just, if you just go with it, if you're following what I'm doing, just go with it. And then you'll see why in the, at the end. Right, the next step is to actually finally draw the center line of the spring. So we're gonna create an arc and that's gonna be a three point arc from randomly wherever here, but as long as you, you make sure you snap onto that line from there to there and then the, just put it somewhere there. And there's your three point arc. That's the center line of the spring. So if you picture the center of the spring is gonna follow that arc. Right, a couple of other things we need to do just to make it look okay. Like I said, this is just for aesthetics. It's not an exact science. It's not gonna be manufacturable. It's just to visually represent a curved spring. But if you look at the scent line, it's kind of bending out and then it's coming back in like that. So it's not coming out of the handles normal to that line. It's uh, just sort of coming out that way. So to fix this, we're gonna draw a line we're gonna make it a construction line, snap onto the end point of the arc, move it down, and then press return, and then press escape. And that creates a construction line that we can make tangent to the arc. Look at that, look at that. Comes out perfectly now tangent normal to the grips. Wonderbar, wonderbar. And we'll do the same up here. Line, construction line, snap to the end point of the arc, make it perpendicular. So it just, it'll automatically snap perpendicular to that purple line. Right click and okay. Tangent constraint between the constriction, constriction line, construction line and the arc. And then that's just bunged itself all the way over there, which is fine. Left click on it, grab it and move it out here. Now this is free to move up and down here. What we need to do is just put a final dimension into this sketch to just fix this spring wherever you want it to be. You can either have it there, you can have it up here. It's up to you, let's say about there, in the middle, somewhere in the middle. Dimension from the end point of the arc, but dimension it to the end point of the yellow line. Can we do that? No, we can't. So what we should probably do then in that case, uh, why can't we? Why can't we? What's, what is this sorcery? Dimension from there to, oh, we can. Right, wh what was that about? Whatever. And let's say that's gonna be 10 mil. And then that fixes us up good and proper. The line's gone blue, that means we're fully constrained, and I'm talking like an American, I'm going up and pitch. And we're done. We can finish the sketch, and we can now start turning off some stuff because it's getting a little bit congested in there. So I think we're done with that work plane, so we can right-click on that and turn it off. The composite, we're done with that. We can right-click on that and turn it off. And yeah, that'll do for now. Right, the next step is to draw a line which is gonna represent the actual spring. What? Yeah, we're not gonna be using the coil command. We're not, we're gonna be using a very bizarre 
in a different, a much different technique. So we're going to create a work plane. Go with me again. Go with me on this. We're going to create a work plane, and we're going to snap to the end. Let's just zoom out so we can get some perspective here. We're going to snap to the end point of the arc, and then select the arc itself. And that creates a work plane, which is perfectly normal to the end point of the arc. Create a sketch on that plane. Project geometry. Project the end point of the arc. Create a line. Snap onto the end point of the arc. And then pull it across here. Snap to the horizontal or the vertical. And then 0 0.8, maybe. 0 0.8. There we go. Right. What is this? What are you doing, you silly Englishman? Well, this is the technique that we're going to use to do it. It's a very strange technique, but it is what it is. Turn off this work plane. Turn this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Right, the technique is we're going to create a sweep of a surface. The profile is going to be the line we've just drawn, and the path is going to be the, obviously, it's the center line of the arc. It's going to be that line there, but that doesn't look like a spring. What are you doing here? If you've got invented 2015 and, and above, we can twist a sweep. So we're going to sweep this line along that profile, but apply a twist value of, if you put 360 in, look what it does. Oh, look at that. So we've got 10 coils, and that's looking pretty good. Does it look like a spring when you click OK? No, no, we're not quite finished yet. What we do have, though, the whole point of doing this is the edge of the... So there's the... That's essentially the line. If you look at the end point of the line, that follows a path as it's been twisted around that path. And then that edge there is essentially the center line. It's the center point and the center line of the actual metal coil itself. So we now need to draw a circle on the end point of that line to represent the metal. And then we're going to sweep that. So just to finish it off, we'll create another work plane. Snap to that point, normal to that uh, center line. Sketch on that work plane. Zoom in a bit so it's not a bit too far out. Project geometry, end point of that. Circle, snap to that point there. And then this is going to be a spring diet of 0 0.4. Right click and OK. Finish that sketch, turn off the work plane done with that right and then the final step the final step is to sweep our circle we don't need to do any 3d sketching or anything inventor is actually pretty good for stuff like this you can just for the path pick the edge of the surface and then look at that bow down to my magnificence it's glorious it's delicious click ok no no twisting necessary nothing like that we can turn off the sweep here so this is the original sweep of the line we're done with that. That's just a construction feature. We can switch off its visibility. And then, yeah, look at that. Look at that. If you're thinking the spring looks a bit too thick, I mean, it's 0 0.4 millimeters in diameter. It's it's going gonna, it's gonna to snap already if you breathe on it. But if you're thinking it is a bit too thick, you can go into the parameters and then just reduce that down to 0 0.2, perhaps. But one thing to watch out for as well, just to highlight one of the points I was making earlier, look how the end of the spring... The profile sits perfectly on top of the handles and the reason for that is because when we did our original sketch here and I offset that line up by 0 0.2 that represents the center of the coil if I didn't do that if I didn't do that line and I started the center line of the arc on that line there then that center of that profile would have been brought 0.2 down and then this part of the spring here and below would have been recessed into the grip handle and that would have been most undesirable. So we can change the coil to 0 0.2, click done, and then that just sorts it all out. It sorts it out because everything's parametrically driven. That changes the diameter and it lowers it down to the grip face. Look at that. It's absolutely delightful. Okay, return back up to assembly level. Now, if you are using the sample assembly, if you expand blade top, there's a constraint in here, which is preset to 155 degrees, and that's the, the angle between the two handles. You can change this, uh, not the name, not interested in changing the name, but down here, it's at 155. If we change this to, I don't know, 170. Look at that. There's your adaptive curved spring. 
keep changing it until it gets to a point where it's not going to compress no more. If you keep changing the angle and it compresses so much that it starts to self-intersect the coil, then it'll just fail. But that's looking pretty good. That is looking pretty good. So that's it at 175. You can go all the way up to 100. Way! Look at that. Uh, but if you want to be proper gangster, if you, want, if you want to be a proper bro, you can right click on that constraint, drive it. Uh, we'll start at 100 and, are we at 175, yeah, we're at 175. Expand the dialog box, make sure you've got drive adaptivity selected. Change the number of increments to one degrees. Let's have 10 repetitions. And then we're gonna drive it to 150, uh, yeah, 140. Click play. Look at that. It looks real, doesn't it? Well, it looks real. Obviously, it's not manufacturable. We've just got a coil sitting on a bit of metal. It would just ping out into space and take your eye out in real life. But it's still a visual adaptive curved spring. It is what it is. And that's how you do it. That is how you do it, ladies and the gents. Thank you very much. If you found that useful, please press like on the video, comment, subscribe, and all that sort of stuff. And put some comments down below if you want any new videos and stuff like that. See you.